Hey guys, what's up? It's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In the previous video, I talked about what is JSON and showed you an example of Facebook Graph API to read JSON data. In this video, it's time to put that knowledge into practice. And we are going to do that by downloading JSON feed from Rotten Tomatoes API. Now, we are not going to use an async task or threads or handlers for this. We are going to use the Android Voli library. Before this video, I have never talked about the Voli library ever. And hence, in this video, I will show you how to set up Voli with Android Studio. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at the Voli architecture used by the library. There are several requests. They are added to a queue based on the priority. Notice the three threads over here: main thread, cache thread, and network thread. First, the data that you're looking for is searched right within your disk by the cache dispatcher. If it's gonna find data within your cache, it's gonna return that to your main thread where you can parse the response. In other words, the idea is very simple. If you're looking for a web page, but you have already loaded that web page in the past, then it's gonna be there inside your cache and you don't have to perform a network operation to get the data. But if the cache dispatcher misses or it doesn't find the data that you need within the cache, then the network dispatcher is gonna be triggered, which is gonna do the HTTP operations like get, put, delete, and it's going to go over the network, get the data that you're looking for, and return that data back to you on your main thread. Let's dig a bit deeper to try and understand the different types of requests and what happens with the queue exactly. These are the different types of requests that you can construct. There's a request queue where all the requests are added. The request is a superclass for all types of requests. And there are several subclasses like string request, JSON object request, JSON array request, image request, and stuff like that. Now the feed that we are going to parse is also going to have images which means we are going to pretty much cover all these types of requests in that example that we are going to work with. And as you saw the cache dispatcher and the network dispatcher in a little more detail look like this. The cache dispatcher uses the disk based cache out there to find out whether the data is available or not. If the data is not available it simply forwards the request back to the network dispatcher. But if the data is found then the network response is generated and that is given back to your handler where you have your response.listener inside your main thread where you get the data. So here the network dispatcher as you know very well is going to use HTTP stack to forward the request. Now there are two types of stacks out there. There's one based on HTTP client, the other based on HTTP URL connection. If your Android version is greater than 2.3 or gingerbread then it's going to use the HTTP URL connection based stack. Else it's going to use the HTTP client based stack and the reason for this is given inside developer.android.com in the Wally documentation or training part where they have explained how the library works. It is basically due to a bug in the HTTP URL connection in the older devices. Once again if the data is found the network response is generated it's given to the handler where you get it inside your main thread in the form of response.listener. Enough with the theory let's get started with the code. I plan to use Rotten Tomatoes JSON API to fetch data. And it's pretty simple. If you go down all the way on RotanTomatoes.com, you'll find the API link over here. So if you simply go there to the API link and they talk about how you can get started with it, the first thing that you need is to register for a user account, which I have already done. At this time, you're going to be asked details like username, display name. But most importantly, at the bottom over here, they are going to ask you about your application that you want to create. You can enter any name over here and give any URL over here. Now it is kind of strange. That they are asking you an application URL before you have even bothered to make your app. So you, I entered some random URL over here for my application for my own website, and you can do the same in your case. And once you've done that, take a look at the call limits. There are five calls per second maximum, and 10,000 calls per day. If you want anything more than this, you're supposed to contact them and tell them why. Once you have successfully registered, you'll be provided with an API key for that application which you just entered while registering. Now you're not supposed to share your API key with anyone else, hence I have blackened it out. Now further, if you go ahead and go to the next step which they have mentioned at the bottom, you'll be taken to the part where they ask you to register a new application where you can enter the details like what you want to do with their data and you have to be very specific about it because they have written it over here saying be as specific as possible. In my case, I have already created an application called Bitbox which is going to simply display latest info about movies and stuff like that and I can edit it by clicking edit over there. And as you can see, I've entered a tutorials programming link over here, just a dummy link. And just in case after your app is published, you can update the application URL to match the exact Play Store link where you have put your app. Now let's see how we can add the Voli library to our Android Studio code. Go to Google, 
and simply type Android Wally here and immediately you'll be taken to this GitHub repository where Wally code is contained. Just open the link over here. Now there are two ways you can add Wally library to your existing app. One is that you get a jar file and add the jar file to Android Studio or you can add the Gradle dependency as it's given over here. So we'll add the Gradle dependency inside our Android Studio by simply going down to build our Gradle. So there you go, there's my dependency at this point. Just rebuild the project and we should be ready to use Wally. Looks like we are ready to use Wally. We can simply test it out by going to our main activity and find out whether it supports creating a Wally.request queue. Let's try and do that. There you go, there's Wally coming here, Wally.new request queue. That is working. So now the next thing that we need to do is set up Wally so that we can use it properly inside our app. Let's see how we can do that. To refer to how you can start with Wally, you can go to developer.android.com. There you can go to the section under training which is called build apps with connectivity and cloud and inside that there is Wally at the bottom which is transmitting network data using Wally. Inside that there are four separate sections. Let's take a look at how we can set things up. First thing you need is the android.permission.internet in my case I have added it inside my manifest file and you should do the same if you want to use the Wally library. Now going down here is how you create the new request or the request queue that I talked about earlier in the architecture of Wally. Simply go here and have the statement which is Wally.new request queue. Now this is a very expensive statement. You wanna you don't want to do this inside every fragment or every activity. Rather, if you plan to use Wally everywhere in your app, you should simply do it inside a singleton object. Now, of course, most people and most examples already do this inside the application subclass, but I would like to point out something before you do that. Go to the second part here, and at the bottom of this part, there is a section which says use a singleton pattern. Here it says if your application makes constant use of network, then it is best that you set up the request queue that will last for the lifetime of your app. There are two ways you can achieve this as per them. They say the recommended approach is to implement a singleton class that encapsulates the request queue and Wally functionality. The other approach is to subclass the application and set up the request queue inside your own create method. But this approach is discouraged. Yet, this is what I came across different websites and examples that talk about how to use Wally library. I'm going to prefer the first approach where I'll be making my own singleton class containing an object of request queue. But before we set that up, let's take a look at what this request queue exactly means. The first place that I come flying to is the documentation whenever I encounter a new library. Here is our request queue class. And you can see there are some constructors out here. But if you remember our example, we are nowhere calling the constructor. We are simply saying volley.new request queue which means this is going to be managed internally by the Wally library and you don't have to call the constructor. At the same time, there are certain methods like add where you can add a request as you can see here. There's cancel all which accepts an object tag. Now this simply means that given a tag, it's going to cancel that request or all requests in that queue with that given tag, which also means that while creating a request, you can assign a tag to that request so that you can cancel it later. And there are methods like start and stop out here. Again, if you notice the code, in the example here, they have not called start and stop anywhere here, which means again, those methods are probably managed internally by Wally itself. Now let's construct a string request and see how we can load a simple URL inside our app to check if Wally is working or not. So going back to the request queue here, the documentation, you can go to string request right here. And our string request has two constructors. As you can notice, it says a canned request for receiving the response body at a given URL in the form of a string. So this is for loading simple pages like php.net. We can go back here and take a look at the constructors. There are two of them. There's int method where you can pass get, post, put, or delete. There's a URL that you have to uh, supply. There's a listener that you have to implement in your activity or fragment so that you can receive the response from your code. And there's an error listener as well to indicate if there are any errors that are happening. We have to provide all of this. So let's construct a string request. Going back to our code inside main activity, remember we have a fragment set up with the help of the my pager adapter in our code so far. Inside this, we simply construct a my fragment object. We can go there to my fragment and we can initialize the request queue for now with this method. We'll make a singleton in the next video. Here, we simply go and construct our string request. As you notice currently, we are going to use the first constructor that takes four arguments. The first parameter that we need to pass is the type of the request, which in our case is going to be request.method.get. Next parameter that we need to pass is the URL, which we'll pass later. The third parameter is an argument, 
where you're going to receive your response. That's going to be new response listener in our case. And the fourth argument that we are going to need is new error listener from Wally itself. So there are our four arguments. Just put the semicolon at the end of this. So the idea is once the page is downloaded, you're going to get the data or the response inside this method public void on response. If some error happens, the response.error listener is going to be triggered in the on error response method over here, where you can process that error. Now both of them are running in the main thread as we saw in the architecture earlier. So in this case, in our own response and on error, simply let's display a toast for now to understand how the response looks like. So coming back to the documentation of a request queue, this is what you see, a request dispatch queue with a thread full of dispatchers. Now calling add request will enqueue the given request for dispatch, resolving from either some cache or network or worker thread and delivering a response on the main thread. Now there are constructors out here and you're not supposed to use them because if you go back and take a look at the code here, it simply says volley dot new request queue, which means they have done it internally and you don't have to manage it. At the same time, there are methods like add request queue, which just mentioned here, that it will post the request and then it will let the dispatchers decide whether that should be serviced with the help of a cache or the network. And then there's a cancel all method here where you can specify the tag and all the requests containing that tag will be cancelled. Now this also means that you can set a tag to a particular request at the time of creating it. And there's of course start and stop. Again, if you go down here, you notice that there is no start and stop called here anywhere, which means again, that's internally managed by Wally for you. You have two constructors for the string request. One that takes int method, which is get, put, post, delete, whatever. And then there's your string URL. And there are two listeners here. Let's take a look at the response.listener and understand. It says callback interface for delivering parsed responses. In other words, if you provide an implementation of this interface, the on response method will be called on the main thread when a response is received. Same way you have another over here called the response.error listener which is a callback interface for delivering error responses. Now go back to the code and if you take a look what I've done, there's the get request here, then there's my URL which is php.net which I'm going to simply try and load and then if you see there's the new response.listener object that has the on response method where I have displayed a toast for now to indicate that I have successfully received a response. Now the fourth parameter after the comma, this, this complete parameter here, which is new response.error listener, which is going to give me a toast message if there is an error in doing the connection. Last but not the least, don't forget to add that request to the request queue by saying request queue.add. At this point, if you run the app, you should be able to see the request run and deliver our response. Let's take a look at that. So here's my pre lollipop and here's my lollipop. I simply start main activity on both of them. And as you notice, the toast message pops out with the complete response from that page php.net, which means this is working perfectly. So now that you've seen how to use a simple example in Wally, in the next video, we are going to construct a singleton pattern for the Wally request queue. And then we are going to take a look at how we can query the Rotten Tomatoes API to load JSON data using Wally. In the meantime, if you like what you saw, Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to SlideNerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.